at the end of the last video, we'd made it so you could call script functions from native code, which was pretty cool. You could call these foo3, foo2, whatever, with, with parameters, native parameters. This, um, this works okay, but uh, what we can't do is we can't call it and pass parameters by reference. So whenever we pass a parameter in, it's just getting copied. So this this one, I mean, we're only passing literals here, one, two, and three. But if we passed an actual like object in, it would be copied before it got sent to the function. And I think it would work in the function if it was a type that we bound to to Lua. But in this in the in the case that we want, we really want to be able to like create an object, and then we want to be able to send that object to Lua, have it do something with it, and then and then we get the object back at the end. Well, we just get the it's had the reference, so we get the we get the changes that it made to the object. So what I really want to do is we have a sprite function, uh, sorry, sprite class. I want to be able to make one of those, and I want to be able to call a function with it. So maybe foo, maybe I could call foo with it. The problem I've got is uh, you can see here this won't compile because sprite is not defined where we've put this code, uh, where we've got this automated binding tutorial. We kind of just plonked this code right in the middle of our binding code, which is pretty bad because that's not what we want. We want to be able to build up a library that can just do binding and we've kind of put our application inside it. And that's why this doesn't work because I can't even include Sprite here because Sprite's inside a CPP file, which is kind of like our application. If you look, it's got our applications functions, it's got our types in here, it's got our registration. So what we need to do is this video, just want to get refactoring done, which will allow me to write this code and actually have it compile. But I'm not actually going to do the pass by reference in this video, I'm just going to get the refactoring done. So I can't write this yet. It doesn't work. So what I really want to do, or what the first thing I'm going to do, is take this whole function, uh, and as you can see, uh, to do move this into its own file. This is our test application. Let's just cut that, and let's just move it into into this test registrations file. I'll just move it aft at the end of, of all this stuff. So that's pretty good. Uh, that, as you can see, is going to generate us a ton of compile errors. Uh, the other thing I'm going to need is the actual Lua script, which was just embedded in our CPP file, was actually at the top here. So that needs to go as well, because that's part of our test application. So let's get rid of that. Um, there. Let's plonk that right in here. Plonk is the official term. So that's moved all our code out of the uh, the binding the, the binding library that we've created. Um, Problem is, what's in the header here? Oh, we don't need that anymore. So that's not in there. So the problem now is this just won't compile at all. So first thing is the main method calls this automated binding tutorial and it can't find it anymore. So I'm actually just for now, I'm gonna cheat and I'm just gonna extern this because we don't have a header for the uh, this test registrations here. We don't actually have a header for that yet. So I'm going to cheat and I'm just going to extern it there. Um, I'm going to pretend that that exists, which it does. So it'll find it when it comes to compile it um, and start fixing up the errors. So the arena allocator, that's our arena allocator class. We just need to include that. And we'll just keep going through these errors and see where we get to. Lewis state, we don't have the Lewis state. Let's include that. Uh, we just include Lua HPP for that. Uh, what else have we got? And now we come to our functions that we've defined in our binding library. Create script, load script, execute script. Uh, we need to put those uh, forward declarations for those in the header file so that we can actually uh, use them. Create script. There it is. So we need we need a forward declaration for that, and let's just compile. See what we get. Uh, so this has got an error because whoa, let's just see the error list. Uh, think this means it doesn't understand it doesn't understand Lua state. So. I'm actually going to, I'll actually include Lua in here because I know later on I'm probably going to need it. So I'll include Lua there. Oops, I need the hash. Let's include Lua there. 
let's get rid of it out of um, here because we don't need it anymore in there and I don't think we'd need it in here anymore because we need to include automated binding we need to include that and that's going to include Lua for us so we don't actually need to include that there we can include that instead uh, what else have we got let's just compile and see where we're up to I think that's fixed that particular problem uh, arena allocator undeclared identifier I can actually forward oops don't want to do that I could actually forward declare that here uh, there's a good CPP con video as a lightning five minute talk it's on YouTube about creating forward declare headers which is a really good idea I'll link that video uh, in the description you might like that one it, it means you don't have to do stuff like that you just include a file that knows how to do all the forward declarations it's a very good idea if you're doing large projects or even if you're doing small ones um, so I need load script execute script and call script function so load script so I need that one I'll just split the window for now I don't know if I can do this with this massive font should be able to I need load script uh, I need this one and I'm going to need close script as well so these are all what we're basically doing here is building up a header file that's got kind of all the public um, like forward declarations for functions that we've defined in our binding library there's a lot more functions in here but um, uh, can I actually see the functions on here no I can't oh is that it yeah so there's quite a lot of functions on there but we don't need all of them in the in the header because not all of those are needed to be called from the person using the library we just need the stuff in here that's like the public stuff Let's see where we get to with that uh, call script function identifier not found did I not do that one uh, ah now here's the first problem uh, really what what you'd expect to do is put this in here but unfortunately, because it's a template function, uh, we're going to need the the person using the library needs to see the declaration of this. Um, so, is it the declaration or definition? It needs to see the definition of this. The declarations there, uh, they need the definition because it's templated. That like the application needs to compile its own version of this call script function. So I can't just like do a forward declaration. I need to put the whole definition in there as well. And that means I've got to include this one, which is also the template which it calls. I've got to put this one in, which is also a template which it calls. And then I may as well put this one in because it's only a little function and maybe it should go in. It's being called by those. So let's just, I've got to cut those and put all these in here. So this isn't something I really wanted to do because these ones I didn't really want part of the public interface, but here they are now anyway. So that's, um, that's my lot in life to have to do that. Um, unreferenced formal parameter uh, that's a warning as error that's telling me that you didn't use this L you passed in why didn't you do that in this case it's intentional so I just get rid of that it does have to have the loose state though because it, it requires that signature uh, and now to Lua isn't found and that's used here so where's to Lua uh, that can be forward declared I believe yeah this can be forward declared I'll take that declare it there and I'll keep the comments in the header I prefer to keep the comments in the header and not in the CPP file because the person using this library needs to see the comments the person editing this library should be able to either read the header or doesn't need the comment anyway so that should be how that works um, let's see if that compiles Uh, it doesn't recognize RTTR variant, so I think if that, we should be able to forward declare that as well. That's a class. Let's forward declare that. Oh no, we can't forward declare it because we're using it down here. So we're going to have to include, uh, we're gonna, we might as well take this include here and put it into the header. So we're just moving code around that's all we're doing uh, and now 
my problem is put Luron stack is already defined in in uh, main obj uh, and that's because um, now I've got these template functions in uh, where is it in main where I called it is it in main it's in I think it's in here it's complained about it. each time I called one of these um, it's generating a new function it's like it's got different template arguments so each one of them is a new function that it generates and compiles I'm not sure how it's working, but it's basically got multiple definitions of these, I believe. Is that right? Already defined. Um, so we need to include that in the header, but we have to ha we have to mark it as inline. Um, and inline, uh, I know a lot of people think they know what inline does, but inline, uh, I might as well inline that one as well. Inline, you think, oh, that, me that means that, inline means that uh, the, the compiler will take the contents of this function and kind of paste it in place of the other one. But that's not what it does. Inline basically allows the compiler to ha to break what is the one definition rule. And the one definition rule says you can only have one of these functions defined in your whole program. There can't be two. But inline allows you to break that rule, uh, uh, allowing you to put m uh, one definition in each compilation unit. Um, so what that means for the compiler's point of view is you're telling it, if you've got one of these in each compilation unit, I don't care which one is being used, just pick any, I'm telling you they're all the same. So it's allowing you to break the one definition rule, which means the compiler can put this into its compilation unit, and it also means because it's in its own compilation unit, the compiler is, is able to more aggressively optimize it, which means it could probably inline it or even remove the whole function if it worked out it didn't even need it. So that's what inline actually does. It allows you to break the one definition rule. Um, that may seem a bit confusing. If you don't know what the one definition rule is, you've got to look up the uh, CPP, the C++ specs for that one. So it looks like that's our refactoring done. Let's just see if that runs. So everything runs the way it did before by the looks of things. This is exactly how it was. So that's what we wanted. We've just moved code around. We haven't changed the function of the program. That is what refactoring is supposed to do. And what has changed is now we have the ability to, uh, in here, we can now make a sprite and we could pass it into here. This won't work, but it will compile. So that's that's what we wanted. I'll take that code out for now, but we've, we've just refactored the code that's that's not changed the program, but it's allowed us, it's gonna allow us to do something that we couldn't do before that just wouldn't compile. So. That's us finished with the binding or to do, move this into its own file. Uh, we don't need that. And it's like, this is our test application. Nope. So there you go. So it's all done. Uh, next video, we will handle, start to handle the pass by reference that we're gonna get. So we're gonna be able to pass something by reference into the Lua script, have it change it, and then we can see the results from that in native. So I'll catch you for that one.